Thomas yawned as he felt the warmth spread through his boiler. He heard the quiet conversation of Percy talking with his driver, something to do with the post. Are you sure there isn't anything for me? Percy asked. Afraid not, just some letters from family living on the mainland and over junk mail. His driver said. Hmm, what's got you interested in the post, Percy? Thomas asked with a yawn. I know you like that job, but I don't think anyone would be writing to you. You don't even have a post box for Tom Tipper to put any letters in. He added cheekily. Percy rolled his eyes and scoffed. I'm looking for letters from my friends on the other railway, Thomas. I worked in many little yards before Sir Tom Matt bought me and I came to live on Sodor. Our drivers helped to keep us in touch by writing letters. I've gotten a few recently, but none from Jinty and Pug. You remember them, right? They came to help while we went to London to visit. Thomas did remember them, and he could remember making a fool of himself in front of Jinty as he was showing off. Jinty had laughed at him, but they became friends by the time he and the other visiting engines returned back to their own railways. I do, and that's strange indeed. You told me you were good friends with them, right? Very good friends indeed. It's strange I've not gotten any letters from them. My driver has sent two letters asking if they are fine and to respond, but I've not heard anything since. I'm worried they might be withdrawn. Pa! Thomas scoffed. As if that could ever happen. Shunters like Jinty and Pug are indispensable. Even if the other railway is pushing for more of those diesels like that one that came to the mainline sheds, we'll always have a place here. I don't know, Thomas. Percy said, unsure. Thomas huffed out of the sheds and went to pick up his coaches. I'm sure they're fine. If I can, I'll go over and see what's keeping letters from them. He hissed to himself. Although he wasn't sure just how he would get the travel to the mainland. His chance came sooner than expected. Thomas was just puffing into Ellsbridge with his afternoon train when the yard foreman walked up. There is an order for a shipment of stone to be brought down to Barrow and Furnish. Should Topper Matt says there are no spare engines other than you, Thomas. Think you can manage? Thomas fizzed with excitement. Certainly, I can do that. Then the job is yours. Daisy will handle your passengers till you get back. It's a long way to get there, so be quick. And then he walked away. Now I'll see what's going on with Percy's friends and why they're not responding to his letters," Thomas said to himself. The sun was getting low in the sky as Thomas rolled over the bridge onto the mainland. The little blue engine was bubbling with excitement. It had been years since he had last been there, and he was eager to see how much had changed. He chuffed past the station over to the goods yard. As he rounded the bend and crossed under the road, Thomas was struck by something. Some coal bunkers laid near the trackside, completely empty. A coal chute nearby was covered in rust with an old sign hanging from one bolt, out of order. A nearby water column had a similar sign hanging from its release chain. Hmm, this is odd. How do you keep a shunting engine fueled without coal? He thought. As Thomas came into the yard, he was struck by how silent it was. Trucks were all in the sidings, tidily arranged, and yet there was no engines to be seen. No clouds of steam and smoke in the air to give any hint that they were there. The air began to get cooler, and a mist was starting to form. That's odd. How come I don't hear any whistles? A yard needs a pilot engine to look after it. Where are they? A yard foreman walked up. Just leave your train there. We'll get a shunter to move it later. Came the gruff response. Thomas looked around. He didn't see any other engines apart from himself. Before he could ask, he heard a growl and a roar from behind. Quickly, a big mainland diesel roared by. It's dark blue and yellow paint standing out from the long train of dirty trucks. It roared through a warehouse loading platform and disappeared into the encroaching gloom. But where's the shunter? I haven't seen or heard one since I arrived. 
He's over there. Thomas looked over to see a faceless diesel rumble past, dragging a train of tankers. It seemed to growl louder as it passed by. As he looked around, he noticed signs. Diesel fuel, diesels park here, don't idle in sightings, and diesel oil were what they said. Uh, where's Genty or Pug? Don't they work here? Thomas asked sheepishly. Don't know no Genty or Pug. Haven't had a Genty in this yard for... Ugh, I don't bloody know. Anyways, you're uncoupled, so why don't you get yourself out of my yard? Thomas is true. Unnerved by the terse order, quickly opened the blue tank engine's regulator, and they raced away into the distance. We have to find a turntable or something to turn around. If only this fog wasn't so thick. He was right. The mist was turning into fog as the temperature dropped. Thomas rattled over the points quickly. His eyes darted around as shapes appeared out of the gloom. Everywhere he saw diesel notices, Coal bunkers filled with weeds and marked with masking tape crosses, indicating not to be used. Taking a guess, he followed a set of track curves between some buildings, which gradually became more open as the warehouse got smaller in scale. This must be the way, he thought. But it wasn't. Thomas followed the track for a ways, but nothing felt right. The tracks creaked and groaned under his wheels as the weeds brushed his chassis. Now he was certain this was the wrong way and he was lost. But up ahead, he saw a gloomy shape of some steam engines in the dim dusk light. Driver, look! Steam engines! Thomas said hopefully. Maybe they can tell us. The words died in his mouth as the mist slowly cleared to reveal just where Thomas was. There were steam engines, but they were all covered in rust. They lay in piles near the tracks. Many did not have wheels and were just boilers stacked up haphazardly. The few engines still on the tracks chilled Thomas the most. These engines were not as rusty as the others and seemed to have most of their parts, but they were silent, silent, and dead. Darkened smoke box doors stared out at Thomas, where their faces had once been. All the engines were small tank engines, just like him, just like. Thomas gasped as he looked in the back and saw a familiar pair of engines. One had six small wheels, and the other had four. Rust almost covered their early BR crests. I... I think we should head back. The driver stammered. Thomas said nothing, but he quickly puffed away the moment his regulator opened. The scrap engines faded away from view, and soon they were lost in darkness and distance. Percy parked his post vans neatly in the sidings and then puffed towards the sheds. As he chuffed over, he noticed one berth's doors were closed up tight. He puffed into his berth and saw Thomas sitting silently. Thomas? The blue engine jumped in shock as if he hadn't noticed Percy coming up. He then tried to force a scowl onto his face. P percy don't do that! He berated, trying to sound cross, though Percy could tell something was on his mind. Sorry, uh, how did your trip go? I'm certain you enjoyed it since you never get to travel along the main line. I know you love your branch line, but still, it's nice to get out sometimes. Thomas looked around, as if not sure what to say. Percy puffed in and parked by his side. How was the mainland? I'm sure a lot has changed. What station did you drop your train off at? Barrow and Furnace. Oh, that's where Ginty and Pug worked. I heard they were moved there following our trip to London. Did you see them there? Thomas looked away and grimaced. Percy looked at him carefully, and in a moment, he understood. Yes, I... I saw them, Thomas said. They... 
they really miss you and said they they couldn't write to you because they were more so busy. I mean, you know the other railway, always busy and... They were scrapped, weren't they? Thomas paused mid-sentence and looked at Percy. The expression on the green saddle tank was blank and firm. It wasn't one of worrying or anything, just acceptance as if this was something he long suspected. I... I'm... I'm sorry, Percy. I really am, said Thomas sadly. It's not the first time, Thomas. I've gotten letters from friends who've been withdrawn and scrapped. I only wish Jinty and Pug have written a letter to me to say goodbye. Maybe they did, and the letter was lost in the post. I guess I won't know. Thomas looked at Percy with a sense of wonder. He'd always known that Percy was a cheeky, bouncy, somewhat naive engine. And yet, he was handling the news very well. He could see sadness in his eyes, but also acceptance that Genty and Pug were no longer around. He wondered for a moment how Percy could be alright with that. Then, as if sensing his question, Percy spoke again. We are very fortunate to live here with such a kind controller like Sir Tom Hatt, aren't we, Thomas? Yes, Percy. We are. It took a while for the engines to move on. Percy recovered in remarkable time. Soon he was cracking jokes with the trucks and being cheeky as always. Thomas took some time. Sometimes, when he was in the shunting yards, he'd stare out along the main line, retracing his way back to those cold sightings in his mind. Eventually, work shoved those thoughts out of his mind, and a smile soon crossed his face once more. But it would be a long time before Thomas would ever dare journey beyond Sodor.